Good morning, my name is Luis Gifle and I'm a researcher at CTTC. With my colleagues at the Packet Optical Network and Services Research Unit, we prepared this experimental demonstration of end-to-end -end NFB orchestration on top of the adrenaline testbed. This work is partially funded by the European Teraflow H2020 project. Let's start with a bit of motivation. ONF Transport API, TAPI for short, is an abstract interface enabling vendor agnostic control and operation of layers 0 up to 2 of transport networks. It is the SDN control interface for optical domains most backed by the industry, and it exposes many data models for digital signal rate, DSR, optical with the photonic media, and for Ethernet. Etsy Open Source MANO is an NFP orchestrator able to manage single and multi site network services which relies on virtual man uh, infrastructure managers for managing the cloud resources in the data centers and one infrastructure managers the, uh, to manage the inter data center connectivity by means of transport SDN controllers. The innovation of this demonstration is that up to the best of our knowledge, this is the first demonstration relying on TAPI as the single interface for both enabling the open source MANO to request multi-site connectivity services abstracting the technological details and also for orchestrating the hierarchy of SDN controllers in charge of uh, the transport network. This is the architecture of the adrenaline testbed created by CTTC. On top, the op open source MANO is in charge of managing the virtual network functions and also requesting the end-to-end connect -end connectivity through the transport API. The request is received by the end-to-end -end transport SDN controller based on APNO that in charge uh, instructs the open day light SDN controllers to configure the packet domains and also the open uh, optical transport SDN controller, again based on APNO, uh, th uh, to establish the optical connectivity. This interaction between SDN controllers is also supported by Transport API. The optical transport SDN controller is in charge of controlling the optical devices through the open line system controller using Transport API and the XFPs on the packet devices by means of an HTTP interface. On the data plane, the optical transport network is composed of four reconfigurable optical add-and-drop multiplexers controlled by means of a REST API by the OLS controller and a set of open virtual switches controlled by means of open daylight controllers using uh, OpenFlow. Finally, the virtual infrastructure managers that are used are based on OpenStack. The app based SDN controllers are implemented by CTTC in Python 3, and they follow this architecture. The service orchestrator is the main module and is in charge of coordinating, implementing workflows and coordinating the rest of modules. It also exposes a Northland interface featuring a transport API plugin. The virtual link manager is in charge of creating the virtual Ethernet leaks from DSR connections requested to lower layers. Then the, the virtual links created can be reused by subsequent Ethernet connections until its capacity is exhausted. The path computation element is in charge of computing the routes for the connections. The transport manager controls the transponders and features a plugin-based architecture to support different transponder interfaces and the, control, uh, the connection manager and the context manager uh, are the components providing Sudman interfaces towards lower uh, controllers. They rely on plugins to interact with different uh, controllers uh, and layers and respectively they are in charge of requesting connections and getting the topological information from these underlying controllers. This is the multi-site Hackfest multi-BDU um, example network service that we are using for this demonstration. It consists on two virtual network functions, each of them to be deployed in a different data center. In particular, one of them is deployed at the edge data center one, while the other is deployed at the core data center. Each virtual network function consists on two virtual deployment units, BTUs for short, that are implemented by means of virtual machines. The management virtual machine is a, the one representing the management unit of the virtual network function, while the data virtual machine is the one for data processing. Both uh, virtual machines are interconnected by means of an internal virtual network uh, within the virtual network function. Then the, the virtual uh, network functions 
are connected to an external management network that is pre-configured in the beams, so it is not of interest. The one that is of interest is the data network, that is uh, the network enabling to interconnect the two virtual network functions on the data plane. To achieve this connectivity, uh, we rely on the one infrastructure manager, that is the hierarchy of ABNO-based SDN controllers. They are responsible for establishing the layer two inter data center connectivity through the data network. And this data, this layer two connectivity service is the one that provides the virtual layer three networking uh, infrastructure. These are the details for this demonstration. The important ones are that we are using MicroStack Usuri for the edge data center, OpenStack Shena for the core data center, Open Daylight and Open Beer switches controlled by means of OpenFlow uh, for the packet layer, the, the use of Transport API version 2.1 um, to interconnect the different Transport SDN controllers, and that we extend the Open Source Mano version 10 with or change uh, 11.733 under review for automatic uh, WIM selection and parameterization and or WIM Transport API connector. Let's start with the demonstration. I will first present the graphical user interfaces of OpenSource Mano and the OpenStax, while my colleague Carlos will be in charge of presenting the Wireshark captures. This is the graphical user interface of the OpenSource Mano version 10 that we are using for this demonstration. As we can see, no network service is created beforehand, and we have configured the virtual infrastructure manager for both of the core and the edge data center, and the one infrastructure manager using the transport API connector uh, that enables OSM to interact with the uh, APNO parent controller. We have also the two uh, graphical interfaces of the core and the, and the edge data center. This is the core. Um, in the, in for each of them, uh, they have a provider or external network that uh, provides connectivity to the internet. Uh, and then, by means of a router, they are uh, connected to the virtual networks for management and for data. We have in the edge data center uh, essentially the same structure. So now, let's proceed with the creation of the network service. For that, we will use um, a network service with this configuration. We can see here that we define to place um, each of the virtual network functions in a different uh, data center. And then for the uh, data network, we specify which are the network uh, names that we want to use uh, to, to interconnect the, the virtual network functions. For the management network, it's not required because it's uh, pre-configured in OSM. So let's create the network service. Here we will put NetSoft 22 network service. We specify to use the Hackfest multi DPU network service by default core data center, and we need to specify the configuration. We will use the configuration that we described beforehand. Create, and now the network service is being created. We will have to wait for some seconds for the service to be. Uh, it's now uh, in, pro in progress. Now if we go to the other data centers, we will see that uh, now the internal network between the virtual deployment units in each BNF is created. We see that uh, the virtual machines are being uh, dynamically created. The same for the edge data center. Well, in this one, it's already created. We have the internal network, we have the data network, and the management network, and the two VDUs or virtual machines. Uh, in this case, one for data, and the other for management. If we go to the other data center, we have the same. I mean, we have the internal network, the data network, and the management network, and the two virtual machines. Now we can check here. It is still. Uh, processing now it is uh, in the last task that is the, the creation of the connectivity so let's wait for uh, some additional seconds we have the connectivity up between the, the virtual machines okay it's done so now the, the virtual network functions are configured now let's proceed to connect to the two 
uh, data virtual machines. So this is the one at the core data center. And this is the one at the edge data center. Let's minimize these two screens. Okay, we are here in the virtual machine in the edge data in the core data center in this case, and on the other side. We are in the edge data center. So first, we will need to configure the ETH1 interface. For that, we will run the DHCP client over interface Ethernet 1. OK, it's configuring IP address. We got the IP address directly from DHCP. And we got the routes within the cluster. These routes, I mean, in the routers are already configured the static routes to reach the other data centers. So here, we will now configure, oops, Okay, IP address, we got the IP address in the edge data center by, uh, through DHCP, and we should have the routes, okay. So now, from this uh, virtual machine in the edge, we should be able to ping, for instance, the IP address of the other machine. It's 10.81.2.5, 10 10.81.2.5. Okay, so the ping is working. Perfect. Here we can see the first packet, which is the OSM requesting to the multi-domain controller the provisioning of the end-to-end -end connectivity service. Uh, first, the multi-domain controller asks the optical controller to provision the connection of on its domain, and it returns the response. And we can see here what happened the multi domain control the first the multi domain controller asked the 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 provision to the optical controller the optical controller in turn asked the open line system to to uh, configure the uh, switches then uh, the optical controller uh, enables the lasers by the using an XFP agent, which first enables it and then sets the channel. And finally, the optical controller returns the response to the multi-domain controller. Then uh, the same is done for the HDC controller, which we can see in here. It, uh, this is the request for, on, for the edge controller. Then it asks the open daylight to, to, provision the, to provision the Ethernet connection. It returns the response and then the edge controller returns the response to the multi-domain controller. Uh, the same exactly as the as what happened in the edge controller is done on the core on the other side on the core the on the core domain and finally it returns the response to the osm and then uh, the sa the same steps are done for the other direction we showcase it an orchestration of an end-to-end -end multi site network service on top of the adrenaline testbed. The Etsy open source MANO orchestrates the cloud resources and requests inter data center connectivity to the hierarchy of AMNO based SDN controllers in charge of the one connectivity. The interaction between the orchestration plane components relies on the Transport API interface and our future work includes contributing 
the uh, transport WIM connector to the OSM project and also extended it with some additional service constraints to bring quality of service assurance to OSM. This concludes the demonstration. Thank you very much for your attention.